My name is Reba Justice Holmberg, and uh, I uh, li have lived in Oak Ridge since 1950. And but I was born in the community. 1923. I was born. <laughs> you have to do some editing. I was born here uh, in the community of Robertsville in 1923, and uh, I went to Robertsville High School, which is now the community school in the Robertsville community. And it was the school that housed all, all grades through, through high school. And I, I went to the University of Tennessee and got a BS in uh, science and came back to Oak Ridge to work in analytical chemistry lab. Um, we were dispossessed by the uh, the. You know, I didn't know I was going to have to do this. <laughs> okay, but well, why don't you start with, with that? Maybe um, you could say, you know, you, you, where Robertson was in relation to Oak Ridge. A lot of people won't know, which is now twenty miles from Oak Ridge, or ten miles, or two miles. I don't even know myself. Well, it now how? Okay, but start again, because you're not going to. No one's going to hear what I say. Okay. Okay. They're just going to edit. Get, don't worry about starting again or making mistakes. Whatever. That's what the editor does. He just takes those little snippets that that he wants. Okay. So, so why don't you um, start with my name and all? No, no, not the name. But just talk about I was born in 1923 in a, on a farm in Robertson, which was. Okay, I was born in 1923 on a farm in the community of Robertsville. Uh, I went to school at the Robertsville School, which now houses the Robertsville Junior Junior High, or the middle school, I suppose it is. And uh, I graduated there and went to the uh, University of Tennessee, where I got a, a Bachelor of Science degree. And then I came to Oak Ridge and went to work in analytical chemis chemistry lab at Y12. Now a lot went on between that time because we uh, had lived in the valley for many generations and uh, a lot of the relatives were clustered in, in, the, in the East Fork Valley which runs, which is now Robertsville Road. And the, uh, my, my grandfather had three brothers who lived, uh, two brothers who lived there and two sisters. and. So we were all nicely settled. My great-grandparents lived on the hill where it's now Wellbrook School. Uh, and they gave the land for the church that is now behind the uh, Wellbrook School. But uh, it, uh, it is known as another, it was the Robertsville Baptist Church, but it's known as another church. Part of it is still there. It was re, uh, redone. Well, uh, when we heard rumors that the land was going to be taken, uh, my grandfather believed them and he started looking for land to move to, although we had not gotten the notice yet. And uh, he didn't drive a car. My grandmother always drove for him. And he um, went walking across the Black Oak Ridge, which is uh, Outer Drive and down in the valley toward Oliver Springs. And he found a farm there just across Poplar Creek that he made, uh, made arrangements to buy. So when this piece of paper came, he, he was ready. Uh, do you want to? The cameraman will do that. You can, you can either hold, you can hold it up if you like. I mean, the editor, can you sit back and, and you can talk about the paper, that's fine. Okay. You can read it if you like. The first official notice came when my grandfather came home one night, and by the way, we lived next door to, the, to my grandparents. My mother was an only child, and so they stuck pretty close together. Uh, and it says, you are hereby commanded to notify James M. Jett, who was my grandfather, 
are his tenant or agent that heretofore on the 15th day of February 1943, a judgment of a declaration of taking number 15 filed in the above proceedings gave the United States of America possession of track, track number F-567 containing 106.1 acres in Anderson County, Tennessee, in connection with the establishment of the Kingston Demolition Range. As of the 15th day of February 1943, which tract of land is fully described in the Declaration of Taking, number 15, on file in my office, and to for forthwith vacate said premises immediately. You are further commanded that if none of the parties are found in actual possession of said premises, to post a copy of this notice at the conspicuous place upon the premises and forthwith make the return of said services to the court. And this was signed by Lee A. Beeler, clerk, United States District Court. And uh, that's, that's when they decided to uh, make plans for leaving. And it was rather hard because this was in January and they couldn't take the crops out of the field. The problems being that with high security, if they were scared somebody would hide someplace among the bales of hay or the stacks of corn. So they were not allowed to take any of the f crops. And I don't know how they managed with uh, their livestock, with their cattle and, and horses and so forth. But I was away at school, so I wasn't right on top of the proceedings. So then I came. Uh, it was very sad. I mean, some people left their animals behind and they were running around and lost and people were scattered all around Clinton and Norris and Knoxville. And, but we were very close by. Uh, it, it, it was very rough going through this, but my parents and my grandparents all took jobs on a on the project. My mom and my grandmother had never worked outside the house. And uh, believe it or not, they took jobs too, which meant they could pursue their hobbies at home and, uh, and have a check coming in every month. Um, let me think a minute. <laughs> I need to take the paper so it doesn't crinkle. Okay. Um, what else, Bob, should I say? Well, I lived at home and... Uh, you never said where Robertsville was. Robertsville is where the middle school is now. Is, everybody does On Robertsville. The middle school is in the center of Oak Ridge. Oh, in the center of Oak Ridge on uh, Robertsville Road, uh, which is, was, is near the uh, Hilltop Gate, down the ridge from Hilltop Gate. Um, Let's see. Can you tell me, do you know what jobs your mother and uh, our grandmother had at the uh, plant? Uh, they worked at? My mother had an interesting job. She was a chaufferette. They had a, a cars that people who needed them could take. And so there was a carpool. And she drove uh, the big wigs around <laughs> in the cars. Actually, she went out of town sometimes to take people. And she was responsible for getting my job at the lab. Uh, I came out here and I knew the personnel manager. He, his daughter was a roommate of mine at UT. And so he said, would you like to work with my daughter? And I said, yes, I would. So when I took the job, it was in the reproduction room and it was running off material, it was turning drums and stuff like that. And I thought, surely I can do better than this. I've got this hot little degree in my hand and most of the people I'm working with are just out of high school. So I talked to my mother about it and she said, I'll see what I can do. So she was connected with the people who <clears throat> were in the position to hire me and she kept asking around. And, Finally, one of them asked her, she had chemistry. 
And she said, yes, and send her down. So it took me just a few days to, to pass the Q, Q clearance. And I went, to, I went to, to work in the analytical labs at Y12. Uh, and uh, my husband's a chemist also, but that's not where I met him. Uh, I met him through somebody that I worked with. Uh, Bob came here uh, shortly after I did, and uh, we knew each other for a long time, and were married in 1950 in the chapel on the hill. And then we bought, uh, we lived in rental houses because they were not, private houses were not available at that time. You couldn't, couldn't own your own house. Uh, but we bought a, when the houses were being torn down, after people were allowed to buy their own land, um, Bob said, uh, I think I'll buy some lots. Uh, and I was in the hospital having one of the kids, and he picked out a lot that he liked. It was a double lot where they had two flat tops, but he was able to, you were able to buy a court and seniority. You had to bid on the lots, and they were very reasonable. So he bought this piece of ground, or he applied for it, and he got it. And when I got out of the hospital, those were the days when you could loll around in the hospital for a week <laughs> when you had a baby. And uh, I went out to see it, and I said, Bob, you've bought part of the back 40. So the whole street we own, we live on now, was uh, was on the farm that uh, uh, my folks and uh, there was down the we live on the ridge and down in the valley there was a house that was torn down that was had fallen down, and the rumor got around that that's where the Indians lived, but it wasn't. It was where my father's, my grandfather's uh, helper lived on the farm back there, so we. We live. We we still live there today. We had four four children, and they've all married and moved away, except one who who lives here. And uh, it's it's a great city. They got a great education, and um, I suppose that's all I should say. Anything else, Bob? Oh, Bob's from Iowa. He came. You can talk about him. Okay. How about? A little more about your your family um, or other people that were dispossessed and how they felt about it. How, you know, now the years have gone by. You know how they feel about the coming of this project. Well, everybody was very confused and very sad. It, it came so quickly, and everybody was had to get out right away, and they didn't pay enough to. Re replace the type of place that you had, the government. It was, we were very poorly paid for the land. And also we had a, a lot of people who were looking for land, so that made it hard. And uh, I know I've often had to bite my tongue when people said, oh, they put the plant there, uh, because there was nothing there. <laughs> Actually, it was fairly well populated and we had post office and lots of churches and two schools, the Wheat School and the Robertsville School, and uh, stores and all the things you find in, in rural communities. And uh, let's see. Uh, it was very sad for my grandfather because he'd lived there since he and my grandmother were married and he'd built barns and ponds and cultivated and, and developed his fields and uh, fruit trees and all the things that you do over the years and he had to leave all that behind. But he didn't mope around about it so he, he just came and uh, he was, uh, you asked me what their jobs were. My uh, grandfather was a custodian at one of the schools. And you know, I don't know what my grandmother did, but my dad worked for the, my dad had a, a business 
he was not a farmer. He, my grandfather took care of the farms and he had a business back in the days before TVA came in. He had a coal mine and uh, an ice house, so he sold ice and coal before Oak Ridge. And it wasn't until TVA finally came in and we had electricity. We didn't have electricity until I was 10 years old. So we had to use ice and coal and uh, Aladdin lamps and things like that. Um, let's see. I suppose that's about it. Was your grandfather able to buy as much land east of Poplar Creek as he had had at Robertsville? I don't think so because he had, my father had uh, two farms. He had one that was beside the Robertsville school, we lived next door to the school. And then he had one further down the valley on Robertsville, on East Fork Valley Road. And uh, their farming uh, abilities, they didn't have as much land to farm on as they did before. But my mother was a horsewoman, <laughs> so she started raising and training quarter horses. And so she was quite happy. They had a big barn and uh, um, she, furnished the horses and we furnished the kids. <laughs> she, she went to horse shows. They participated in horse shows all over the East Tennessee actually and uh, that was her big, she did that and did her job and she was quite happy with it. And my dad, uh, he also bought uh, uh, some school buses so he had hired people to to run his school buses because the kids in Oliver Springs, that's where our, our the farm is, had to go all the way to Clinton to school. And it was uh, very sad because the, uh, the kids couldn't come back in here uh, without badges or without permission slips. And, uh, and it, there was a lot of bitterness mm -hmm. toward Oak Ridgers, I think, because they're here having better schools, more money to spend, winning all the sports activities, and we had to go all the way around to school in uh, Clinton. But as for me, it was great, because I came right out of school here, and there were so many guys just out of college who were scientists and engineers coming to work that the pickings were great. <laughs> And it was lots of fun to have all the guys to pick from. And uh, I met Bob through a fellow chemist who worked in our lab. Because were there very many women chemists, or are there women with degrees in science? Not so many. Can you make a sentence of that? Because people won't hear my question. OK. Uh, in the lab, in the 9733-2, there were probably 50, well, let me take that back, I'm just guessing, 30 chemists. And of those, there were probably 10 or 12 people who worked in the lab because they had secretaries and, uh, and so forth, glass blowers. We had a lady glass blower, but not many ladies working in the lab. So that was fun too. And the labs were very crowded. You hardly had space to to work because there were so many people in each lab. And when did what year did you come to work? Uh, forty-three. In August of forty-three. As soon as I, I don't remember how long I worked at the other place. Not very long, but till I moved to the. And, uh, did, you, did you live at home or did you live at home? I lived at home. My mom and I came to work together because we both worked at Y-12. And I had one sister, but she, but she didn't work. She stayed home and kept the home fires going, I guess. Um, and of course, there were lots, there were lots of things to do in early Oak Ridge. 
most every club, most every hobby or interest you had, there was a club to support you. And of course, you've heard about the dances on the on the uh, tennis court, and all the recreation buildings had dances most every Friday night, and they were quite crowded, and you met a lot of people there. And uh, my roommate I had to college was a phys ed uh, major, and she went to uh, New York and was a trainer for the Powers model. She went to uh, play on Broadway, and she wrote me that one of the songs that she heard was that they burnt down the house that I was brung up in. <laughs> So she thought that was interesting. And do uh, you have any other questions? This is good. This is great. Um, do you remember, you, you say your, your mother had a job as chauffeurette, mm -hmm. and that she drove around the big wigs. Do you remember whether she ever drove General Groves or... Um, no, he he worked at the Castle on the Hill, and she only worked at Y-12. But she did uh, drive around. Most of the visitors who came to Y-12, it was a carpool, and uh, I guess it had 10 or 12 people in it, and there were only two women in the carpool. Uh, the rest were men. And uh, Did the men tease her or give her a hard time? Pardon? Did, did you or your mother get any teasing for being uh, sort of doing a man's job? No. Uh, my mom had a hard time. My mom had the lowest badge in the carpool, and it had a union. And when there were things to decide, she always got first choice because she had the lowest badge number. And she always wanted to take her vacation on the 4th of July because it was a good time to be home. That was when the blackberries were ripe. She liked to pick and can blackberries. And the men did get pretty upset at her for always taking the 4th of July week. I remember that. No, she got along all right with the men. Um, but I heard a lot of people, you know, make sort of remarks about the hillbillies who lived there. And it was kind of bad to have to listen to that. And it is true that not too many people went to college, but there were 18 people in my high school class, and I think out of that, about four of them went to college, which was a pretty good uh, number. I went to UT or to Carson Newman or to Maryville. And most of the people didn't move far away, you know, someplace in Anderson County mostly. Lots of people are in the Norris area. John Norris Irvin was our neighbor, and of course he developed the Museum of Appalachia. I guess he moved there 